Hey everyone. So a question came up on the Dynamo forums regarding deleting room tags uh, based on a certain room name. Uh, I saw this this morning. If you're not on the Dynamo forum, go do it. Uh, it's worth getting on and being able to learn things. Uh, but this question kind of piqued my interest because it demonstrates a lot of uh, good necessities for Dynamo and for thinking out a Dynamo graph. Uh, so in this case, they wanted to figure out which rooms in a selected view uh, have a certain name in them and delete the corresponding room tag. So it's not too bad to do. So let's just take a look at it in Dynamo real quick. So in this user's uh, a case, uh, the project is in Revit 2019. So that's what we're doing it in. If you don't know, Dynamo versions vary pretty wildly between Revit versions. Uh, specifically, Dynamo for Revit 2021 has a lot of really awesome nodes for this stuff, but Revit 2019's Dynamo does not, and it gets weird. So uh, we'll just stick in the version that the uh, user had the question about. So I already have Dynamo open, a new blank graph. So you start this by clicking new, and we need to think out this process a little bit. So if I were to do this manually, I would typically come in, I would see the room name, if it equals what I want, so let's say it has the word corridor in it, I would come in, select the tag, and hit delete. So that interaction is what we need to recreate in Dynamo. So since I'm in an active view, I'm essentially collecting all the elements in that view by observing them. Uh, so we need to do that first in Dynamo. So within Dynamo, unfortunately, uh, when we go to Revit selection, uh, all elements of category is an option. Uh, there's no specification for the current view in Dynamo 2.0.4 for Revit 2019. Uh, so what we do need to do is search for all elements in view, I think. And we'll scroll through. Uh, this is one of those ones that's a little bit of an, uh, a little annoying because it is in a custom package. So you just kind of have to know that. Luckily, it is in a custom package that you should have installed, which is Spring Nodes. Uh, so always have Spring Nodes installed. It's a, a central one. Uh, it has an elements and view um, collector. So we have that place and he has a little spring at the beginning of his node name. So that way you know where it came from. In our case, we want to get the view that we're working in. I have the view open. So if we right click, we can search for active view. Once again, there's an out of the box version, but the spring nodes version is way better because it's one node. So we'll place that node. So now we're working from our floor plan view. And just as a reference, I'm in the sample model, just really easy to use because you have this installed with Revit. We'll connect that into the view connection and we'll see that this node instantly runs for us. Right now, it's collecting all of the elements in the view. It has an additional input for categories. So what we can do is clear this search bar and we'll navigate to it. We'll go to Revit, Selection, and we'll notice that in here we have a node called Categories. Let's place that node. This node has access to all the different categories in your active Revit file. Uh, if we hit R for room, we can scroll down and we can find room tags. So let's go ahead and connect that to category and see what happens. So now in three nodes, we've collected all of the room tags within our project. Specifically, there's 31 in this view. So not in our project, but in our view, excuse me. Uh, this node outputs them as a nested list as well. So just to make life easier, we'll go through and we'll flatten this. So we'll remove that whole list structure from it for us. So that way it's nice and flat and uh, we can work with it a little bit easier. Another one, so if we start searching for room tag, uh, we'll see that we have a bunch of nodes available. If you're searching this in a later version of Dynamo, you'll have some out of the box nodes that are available to you. Uh, in earlier versions prior to probably Revit 21, uh, I have a node for that in the package rhythm uh, called room tag dot tag room. So if you were to navigate manually in the browser, you'd go to rhythm, Revit, 
elements and rooms uh, within this, or room tag, excuse me. Within this category, there is a node called tag room. So let's place that. So we'll see that it takes a room tag as an input and it outputs a room element. So let's go ahead and fulfill that connection. We'll toggle that option and view it. So we had 31 room tags in our active view, and we have 31 rooms that those are associated with as well. Uh, so really easily, we can start to parse this data a bit. Generally speaking, in Dynamo, if you search for the element you're messing with, so like room dot, it'll give you all the properties that you have available to you for that element. Generally speaking, uh, sometimes that varies depending on how the node's named but it's a good rule of thumb that you focus on what you're working with within Dynamo and you should see values that you can use. So in our case, we see room.name. Uh, so that is a node for us. If we right click, we can go to help and we'll see that that's an out of the box node. I know that because it starts with revit.elements.room. We'll go ahead and put this at the end and connect it as well and we'll see that we're getting a whole lot of room names now. So really cool. And we'll just keep on collapsing the previous node as we work forward. So now we have the room names, we need to figure out if they contain certain values. Uh, this is what's known as a string. So in Dynamo, if we search for type, this little node right here will report what object type we're dealing with. In the case of room.name, it's outputting a string. Uh, so we know that we're dealing with strings. If I were to connect a room to this, we'll see that it's a revit.elements.room. So knowing your object type really will help you build out the rest of your graph. So knowing that we're dealing with a string, we'll go ahead and navigate to this manually. So we'll go to string in the library, inspect, and we'll see that we have some options available to us. One of which is contains. So this description of this node says, determines if the given string contains the given substring. Sounds a lot like what we're wanting to do. Uh, in the case of this user, they wanted to search for uh, rooms with the name storage in them. This sample file has a room called dry storage. So we wanna find that one too, if we can. So we'll go ahead and place a contains node and we're going to navigate to the back half of this graph now. So we've collected and flattened. We'll hide that portion right now. And we'll collapse the previous node like we've been doing. So string will go into string because that's the string we're going to search in. And then we need to search for something. So in our case, we'll just do one element for now. The blog post that I'll link below uh, shows you how to do multiple names, but we'll focus on the name storage right now. Uh, the easiest way to input a string in Dynamo would be to double click for a code block, which is kind of a scary looking thing. But once you learn this, you'll, you'll just always input them this way. So we'll do a double quote, and then we'll type in storage, all lowercase, uh, double quote to end it, and click outside of it. So we now have a string. Once again, if we wanted, we could search for that type node that has this little marker on it and see what this data type is. It is a string. Uh, since this is a code block, we can reuse them as well. So if we hover on string.contains, we'll see that the third input takes a Boolean value. It also has a default value of false. Uh, this is for us to ignore the case. Uh, anytime you're doing comparison of data in Revit, it's a good idea to ignore the case because you don't know what a user typed. They might have typed capital S storage, lowercase s storage, or some variant of that that you have no control over. So a general rule of thumb is to just convert to lowercase and deal with it. So we'll go ahead and hit enter in the code block. We won't put quotes this time and we'll type true all lowercase. This is important because in code blocks, they can automatically convert your data to what you need for another input. Now uh, they're really great for Booleans, that's what true or false is, or strings, which is what storage is. We'll go ahead and connect these nodes now. And with those connected, we'll have a list of values. Uh, this is what is known as a Boolean mask. Uh, this is interesting because it's kind of a weird concept 
but it essentially covers your data and lets the true values go one way and the false values go another way. I have another video on explaining that that I'll link as well. Uh, it should be on a link on this video. Uh, but if you get it in your head that this is a Boolean mask, uh, we'll be pretty good. Um, its short name is Bool mask, B-O-O-L mask. So if we search that in the library, we'll see that there are a few options if you have Springs installed. In our case, we want to filter our list. So we'll place that node. We'll see that one of the inputs is a list of Booleans representing a mask. That is what this node outputs, a Boolean mask. So that'll go into our mask connection. We'll make a little bit more room for ourselves. If we hover over the list input, it tells us what list do we want to filter. If I connect this to room name right now, we'll see that it just filters out the strings, the names. I can't do anything with this because I want to mess with room tags. That's my original objective, if you recall. I want to delete room tags that have a certain name. Uh, so I can't filter the room name. That's, that's going to give me problems if I go down the line. Uh, so what we need to do is we can disconnect this, make a little bit more room, and we'll plug in the room tag element from the flatten. So we'll have to move this one down as well. So these are where our room tags originally were. Once again, if we type in type on a search, we can see what element we're dealing with, which in this case is showing us unknown element, but those are our tags. Uh, we can plug that into the filter by Boolean mask, and we now have room tag elements. The reason I know they're elements is because they do have a green element ID uh, within the viewer within Dynamo. So with that done, we've now filtered room tags by a name. Really cool. So we've kind of worked our way from the outer level, which is room tag, down to room, down to name, and then filtered them. Uh, within this part of the workflow, we do want to delete something. So if we search for delete uh, within Dynamo, we'll see a few different options show up, and that's because when you search things, it'll search the description people give it as well. Um, but we want to delete an element. And out of the box Dynamo, uh, prior to Revit 2021, uh, does not include a delete node. Uh, I think it's for our own safety, frankly, but package authors include them. The one I really like is from Spring Nodes. So if we uh, select this one that has a little spring in front, you can also filter by packages if you really want it. So you can come through and deselect that way you show up for what you want. I know that I like the spring nodes one, so we'll place that node and we'll observe the inputs real quick. So we'll see that it tells us that it attempts to delete input elements from the document. It takes a list of elements and a Boolean, a true or false, to say, yes, try it. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll plug in our elements. It's defaulted to nothing, so it won't run yet. That's important because if you put something in and it keeps running, it's literally chewing on your Revit model. Um, so we don't want to do that. What we do want to do is we'll go to Manual. We'll right click and place a Boolean node. And we'll toggle it to True and connect it. It's not running yet because we're in Manual Run mode. So what we'll do is kind of scroll this over, hopefully, and we'll have to navigate our graph a little bit. But we'll see if we zoom in and we hit run, we'll see two room tags disappear. And that's because those are my two storage rooms that have the word storage in them. If we were to update parts of this graph, we could run it again. So in the case of What's another thing? A toilet. We can delete all the toilet room tags if we wanted, or the conference rooms as well. Instruction, there's a bunch of them, so let's do instruction. So what we'll do is we'll type in instruction in this code block to replace that input, and we'll hit run again. And now we've seen that those room tags have uh, deleted. So you could end up saving this graph for Dynamo Player or something like that and using it over and over again on your projects, which is pretty neat. Uh, if you were to do that, you wouldn't use a code block for this input. You would actually use 
a string input. And then you would rename it like to delete or something like that. Uh, the last step is you tell it to use it as an input. So with that done, we would end up telling it what to do. So electrical will remove now, we'll replace that, and we'll hit run. So we're starting to delete those tags very specifically. So there it is. We covered a bunch of topics, collecting things, filtering things, and deleting them. Uh, also making the graph compatible with Dynamo Player. So give that a try. Uh, I hope it kind of helps everyone out. And yeah, just have fun. Thanks.